begin today's program with the efforts to contain the coronavirus, which has now been officially named as COVID-19 by the World Health Organization. The total number of confirmed cases in China has passed 44,000. The death toll stands at over 1,100, while more than 4,700 people have recovered. This Tuesday, the WHO held a meeting gathering the world's leading scientists and medical experts for a clear mission to map out over these two days the gaps in research and also learn more about the specific of this virus and above all to decide the best way to develop medicines and ultimately a vaccine which could cure it. Earlier this week, a team of international experts led by WHO also arrived in Beijing to help with the response to the epidemic. For more on WHO's latest assessment, earlier today, I talked to uh, Turek Jasaravich, who is a spokesperson for the World Health Organization. Let's listen to what he had to say. Uh, what about the WHO delegation of experts? They are already in China. We understand their mission is to interact with the Chinese side for communication and exchanges of information and analysis. What are the latest uh, they are having right now on the ground? Your uh, take? Well, uh, advanced team has arrived uh, in China. We are waiting for other members to to join them. And as you said, uh, they will uh, they will work uh, with, with with the Chinese uh, health authorities, with the uh, uh, Chinese scientists, uh, trying to uh, understand uh, 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 the situation, trying to learn from uh, Chinese experts on the response uh, uh, that had been put in place. Uh, so this is something that we obviously will be reporting on as they start working with the Chinese counterparts. Of course, you are saying the events team has already arrived, but later will be joined by other members. So how big a team eventually it will be? How many countries will experts be coming from? What are likely to be the areas these experts are from? What are exactly their job descriptions on the ground besides exchanging, sir? Well, this is ex exactly what, what is being discussed. As uh, Dr. Uh, Tedros has said, uh, we are expecting a team of, of about 10 people representing different, uh, uh, different expertise uh, that are normally uh, being called upon uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a outbreaks of infectious diseases. And again, uh, their terms of reference, if you wish, uh, will be really worked on together with the, with the Chinese counterparts uh, once they start uh, to, to, to work together. Mr. Turtlerevich, I'm sure you are aware of the latest assessment also given by Dr. Zhong Nanshan, who is a very well-respected scholar from China. He's been talking about, he expects, that I quote here, uh, there's likely to be a wrap-up of the outbreak by April. Uh, he said he hoped that would be the case. And there's likely also to be a peak of the outbreak in the middle and the end of this month. Uh, your assessment, do you concur with that or it's hard to say? Well, for us, uh, we, uh, we really think it's hard to predict uh, how this outbreak can go. Uh, in, we have seen in the past with other diseases that uh, uh, epidemiological curve can go up and down. Uh, uh, what is really important is to work all together to put in place measures so we do our best, uh, so we don't see a, a, a rapid spread of a disease uh, 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 among, among populations in different countries. Uh, can I clarify here, Mr. Jotarevich, uh, on behalf of the WHO, you are not going to put your finger on a specific time or a specific date, either about so-called peak or about a so-called turning point or the wrap-up of the disease. Is that correct? That is absolutely correct. So uh, we uh, think that it's difficult uh, to predict where the outbreak can go. Uh, and uh, we have seen in the past that predictions uh, uh, may not uh, uh, turn out to be true. Mm -hmm. So really, we want to focus on working together and on solutions. Let's talk about the solutions, since you've been focusing very much on that topic. And right now, there's forum going on about the global uh, effort to tackle with the outbreak. Quote, if I could use, identify the source of the virus and also share biological samples and genetic sequences. That is the goal, as WHO earlier indicated for this forum. Now, so far, any outcome, any achievements, specific results particularly, Mr. Jasaravich, anything to brief us? 
Well, uh, we will uh, have a press conference uh, tonight after the end of the meeting uh, where we will hear uh, from, uh, uh, from WHO and from the co-chair who are running this meeting. I think uh, what is really important is to, to stress that, uh, that there, is a, uh, there is a really large number of uh, questions that are being discussed and what we expect is uh, to have a clear roadmap on what needs to be done. And it's not only uh, about uh, uh, genetic uh, sequencing or sharing the material, it's really about trying to see what studies need to be done so we understand really uh, the, the, the transmissibility of the virus, uh, we understand uh, uh, its severity. Uh, then also another part is to work on treatments and work on vaccines, what kind of trials uh, should be put in place, uh, also to look into what is the source of the virus. So basically we look into a, a really vi variety of questions uh, mm. from technical and scientific point of view and what we want to have is to say, okay, these are the areas we need to focus on as a global scientific community and this is the roadmap. If you look at uh, coronavirus over the past 20 years or so, there was SARS, there was MERS and now there is the uh, COVID-19 as you said. Isn't it a bit slow if I could uh, use a word to describe the process now? After all, we've been having crisis as a result of the coronavirus over the past 20 years. You might argue they're different but still People wonder, haven't we learned much? Well, uh, coronaviruses, uh, we know, uh, uh, circulate in, in animal world. And there are a number of these viruses that have been identified, but a uh, uh, majority of them have not really uh, got to the human population. Uh, and I'll just uh, remind you, for example, that we know for MERS uh, that is uh, being uh, 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 residing in camel population. Mm. Uh, so, uh, so we have to understand where in animal world the, the, the virus is and that's important because in that way we can reduce the possible uh, exposure. The work uh, we want to do is to accelerate the research. We have relearned for example from Ebola in 2014 that if we uh, get our, to, uh, our efforts together we can uh, accelerate the work on uh, treatments and on vaccines. For example we are now using vaccines uh, uh, and treatments uh, in Ebola outbreak in DR Congo uh, uh, that have been developed in a very uh, short period of time. So we want mm. to use the same approach here so to accelerate what normally takes a long time right. uh, to produce a vaccine, to get the, 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 the compounds, to the clinical trials, to do mass production. Uh, and the idea is really to get, get, get a, and make things a, a faster than what usually would be. As far as I know, sir, that will be at least 18 months, right? According to the latest information coming out of the WHO vaccines. Well, we will have to see really uh, how, uh, because it depends also how fast we can develop the compound that it's used in the vaccines, how, how well the clinical trials are gone. We have to really look into, into all different parameters and then to add different uh, uh, time uh, periods that are needed for different phases and then be before giving, uh, before giving uh, any timeline. Again, uh, uh, that's a part of the solution. That's uh, vaccines and treatments. What really we have to all understand that bigger part of solution is how we all uh, uh, behave mm -hmm. and how we equip our health systems. If we uh, uh, all adopt a, a responsible behavior and if we equip our health systems around the world uh, with the necessary technology, with necessary equipment and supplies, if we train health workforce, uh, we will be able to, to reduce the number of uh, cases. Right. And one thing we know, and this is something part, uh, that is part of international health regulations, we want countries to invest in health systems. So whatever pathogenies, whatever diseases, countries have strong health systems that, that can allow them to quickly detect and respond to outbreak whatever pathogen is. Unfortunately, we know that many countries in the world do not have that core capacities. Uh, and this is why uh, Director General was, was saying that uh, one of the biggest fears is what if uh, uh, this uh, COVID-19 uh, virus comes uh, to, to countries with a very weak health system, will they be able uh, to respond adequately? We understand in particular the epicenter of the outbreak of Wuhan, very uh, being stretched, uh, the resources and also uh, medical workers, extreme stress and pressure. 
what are some of the important principles, sir, the WHO would hold closely in terms of how to handle a situation like this and protection and respect for the medical workers as well? Uh, we have repeated on several occasions that uh, we really uh, 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 appreciate the work that has been done by, uh, by health workers in Wuhan. Uh, not only health workers, but the whole population of Wuhan is uh, in a very difficult situation uh, and they bear the, really the, the burden of this, of this outbreak uh, the most. Uh, by working uh, hard as uh, health workers are doing right now in affected areas, they are protecting not only uh, uh, people of Wuhan, but they're also protecting the world safe because uh, they are trying so hard to, uh, to, uh, to uh, reduce the risk of uh, onward spread. We know that for, for most of diseases, health workers are uh, most at risk because they are in contact with people who are sick and they expose themselves. So we should always think about uh, how heroic their work is because they are putting their life uh, in danger to, to protect patients, but to protect all of us. Mm. What do you think are some of the most important supplies and resources health workers on the front line should have under such circumstances? Well, uh, we, uh, we have issued a, a set of guidance uh, at the very beginning of this outbreak mm. uh, on a clinical management of the patients, on a uh, reduction uh, of uh, infection and uh, 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 infection risks, uh, so infection uh, prevention and control measures within the, uh, the health facilities. There are uh, uh, detailed instructions uh, what protective equipment should be used when dealing with the people yeah. who are confirmed. Uh, and we hope really uh, that, uh, that, that, that uh, uh, we will be able to help especially countries who do not have uh, enough of uh, capacities uh, with, uh, with the diagnostic tests with the supplies and equipment and we are preparing a specific uh, kits uh, so boxes that will be sent to the countries that uh, we know uh, may need it so in case they get cases uh, that uh, they can equip their health workers uh, so they stay safe. Uh, would this, uh, these countries that you just indicated include China, include Wuhan for example, the epicenter of the outbreak? China uh, has, a, has a developed uh, health system uh, in the past years, uh, so we really, as WHO, we can help uh, China in this work on scientific uh, 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 galvanizing of the community and sharing the information, but really there are countries in the world that we need to uh, uh, help uh, with the more basic things uh, such as supplies, diagnostic tests uh, yeah. and, and, and other, other things. We identified 13 countries in Africa uh, that, uh, that would uh, really uh, be uh, 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 important for us to work with them, uh, with those countries and trying to see what exactly they need mm. uh, and how we as WHO uh, can help. The Director General of the WHO earlier indicated at a press conference that he is willing to come back to China, to even the epicenter of the outbreak, to Wuhan, to visit people there. Is there any timetable? Well, uh, he indicated that uh, he is willing. Uh, I will just remind you that uh, uh, during the current Ebola outbreak in the uh, Democratic Republic of Congo, he, he went on a number of occasions to the epicenter. Uh, and obviously, uh, if uh, uh, this uh, could be done and it is, if it is being agreed, uh, then, then he, will, he will do that. Tarugit Jesarovic, the spokesperson of the World Health Organization based in Geneva. Thank you so much, sir, for taking your time and joining us at this critical moment. Really appreciate it. All the best.